As you may know, Rafe has been uh, sentenced to a thousand lashes and ten years in jail. He served three of those ten years, but the thing of being of great concern was the fact when his lashes started on January the 9th, um, he was to have them for over a 20 week period, uh, a total number of thousand lashes. Um, he's only taken one dose, as it were, partly that's because, as the Saudi Authority re um, reported, of his medical condition after his first lashing. He, we know he's not in very good health, uh, but partly because of the outrage that was caused across the world by that lashing. Um, many of us, actually, a number of people had done me no work on Rafe Badawi for a long period of time. Myself, I only really picked it up after his, his, his first vlogging. His, his first vlogging, I should say. Um, now, the Supreme Court last week, the weekend before last, um, which was reviewing his case, there was some the flagging was called up partly because we think the case was being reviewed, but it upheld that charge. So we don't know exactly when that flagging is going to stop. <laughs> One of the um, things before us now is how we try and prevent that flagging taking place, but far wider, how we fight to lift his sentence, how we get him unconditionally and immediately released. The crime he was alleged to have committed, as you probably all know, is merely to express his personal opinions, his personal desire, desire for a move to democratic um, methods in Saudi Arabia. And the Saudi regime came down very heavily upon him. Initially, he was charged with apostasy, the renunciation of the Muslim faith. They lifted that charge, however, but it still hangs over him. As, as you probably know, the, the sentence of apostasy, for apostasy in Saudi Arabia is execution, a mandatory um, sentence. Now, we delivered our open letter uh, this dinner time to the Prime Minister, uh, and we had all the white coalition, which I'll introduce the various parts of in a minute, were, were there. We have no illusions that um, David Cameron, we were hoping, or I certainly was hoping for another Prime Minister there, but uh, we have no illusions that whoever, whichever Prime Minister was there, it would be very difficult to win this particular demand, because what we're calling for is not, we're not just calling on the Saudi government to lift the sentence and so on. We're actually calling on pe people in this country, the governments, companies, to review their trade relationships. We're calling on the arms companies that make literally billions of pounds in profits from their, um, their um, militarization of the Saudi economy. The Saudi army or the Saudi regime is the fourth highest military spending country in the world. It has an immense army being used. I think one of the reasons why uh, uh, this issue has become so important is because, as Francis Wien put in his article uh, in The Independent today, you make a comparison between ISIS and Saudi Arabia, and you can't tell that much different between the, the sentences they inflict on their people and the sorts of justice system they have. And people are beginning to ask questions, what, why is our government supporting the regime? Now, I mentioned a coalition uh, of, of organisations. <coughs> Um, we're going to. We're very pleased to have a, uh, representatives from a number of political parties at the top table. We have Natalie Bennett of the Green Party, Stuart McDonald of the SNP, and Sarah Champion of the Labour Party, who we hope will be taking early in the thing, but a number of them will have to run over to the House to vote in a division at 7 o'clock. So we'll be taking them uh, pretty much first, and then we would also taking speakers from some of the coalitions. Now, I, I would say, to, uh, to start with, that one of the Organisations I've had been immensely impressed by uh, over the last few months is English Pen, and um, Joe will be speaking on behalf of English Pen. Who they've had, and, you know, I'll give to their Cat Luke as their organiser. They have held uh, vigils outside the Saudi Embassy every Friday, every day, where rape was likely to be inflicted, had the flooding punishment inflicted. We never knew from week to week whether that was going to happen. So I'm very pleased that Joe can speak today from uh, English Pen. We also have Melody from the well-established Human Rights Organization Index on Censorship. And we're hoping, if we can uh, get it uh, sorted, we'll be having a video that we'll be playing for you from Jimmy Wales, a video that's just being released now. We'll also be having a, uh, a, a speaker, Anne Felton, from the Campaign Against the Arms Trade, who over many years have campaigned and exposed the relationship between the arms companies in this country and uh, Saudi Arabia. 